Assassin's Creed Mirage is here, and that means you can take control of Bossom and explore the streets of Baghdad, climbing buildings, running across rooftops, and dropping down on unsuspecting guards. But before you venture out, we've got a whole host of tips and tricks that might just save your life. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today I'm sharing everything I wish I knew sooner about Assassin's Creed Mirage. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The most important thing you can do early in any Assassin's Creed game is unlock the game's sync points. These are always the highest points in a region and each offers a small climbing challenge. However, once you reach the top of the tower, you'll have the ability to fast travel between any of these sync points for the rest of the game. I know it sounds silly, but it's easy to skip these. And believe me, you'll be kicking yourself when you do have to return to an area and you don't have the sync point unlocked. So take the time and get it done. Speaking of moving around the world, here's one I am still kicking myself about. As with most Assassin's Creed games, you can fast travel between any of your sync points, which is a great way to move around the world. But until about 10 hours in, I didn't realize that you could also fast travel between hidden one bureaus. Now, this might not sound like a big deal, but you'll frequent these places throughout the game as it'll be your first and final stops to liberating an area of Baghdad. Often, the standard sync points are hundreds of meters away from these bureaus, which just grinds your progression to a pretty annoying halt. Now you know, you can fast travel to any Hidden Ones bureau, which should allow for a much more seamless travel experience. While you're exploring Baghdad, you'll run into a number of situations that require you to find a key. Some are tied to a main story, but most of these instances are related to unlocking gear chests. This is where Enkidu, your trusty eyes in the sky, come into play, because keys can only be located from a bird's eye perspective. More so than previous Assassin's Creed games, your bird is an invaluable tool for scouting locations, and in this case, finding those pesky keys. Toggle to Enkidu and scout the entire field for a tiny key icon. Once you locate it, be sure to select it by placing a marker. This will make it easier to track down when you return to Bossa. It's a simple trick, but one I'd wager it will stump more than a few players. Once you reach a certain point in the game, your access to the skies won't always be guaranteed. In many cases, you'll have to contend with an archer who will instantly shoot at your bird, restricting your access to that all-important bird's eye view. When that happens, your number one goal should be to take out the archer that's keeping Enkidu from flying above. Until you eliminate that target, you won't be able to call him to recon an area, which could hinder your progression. Remember, Enkidu is the best way to locate things like patrols of guards and keys, so having him available is a huge help. If you're like me, you don't enjoy the long and sometimes laborious trek from one side of a map to the other. But in Assassin's Creed Mirage, before you unlock all of your sync points, you'll need to make that journey a handful of times. A simple trick to make this as painless as possible, set a marker on or close to your destination. Then call your mount by holding down right on the D-pad, and of course, set your horse or camel to auto travel as well as navigate to the marker. Once you do that, you can set your controller down, kick back and coast to your destination saving you all the hassle. Favors make the world go round, or at least they do in Baghdad. There are three distinct tokens players can scoop up as they adventure across the city, and each provides powerful gameplay advantages. The game would lead you to believe these are incredibly rare, but after just a few hours with the game, I realized that was pretty far from the truth. By walking the streets of Baghdad and tapping into your eagle vision every few seconds, you'll notice that a good portion of the city dwellers have purses just ripe for pickpocketing. To my surprise, I found this to be the single best way to get these favor tokens. After just a little effort in a heavily populated area, not only was I rolling in favors, but I also had a ton of trinkets I could sell at the shop. Favors are a great way to gain advantages while progressing through the main story, so stock up and capitalize on their power. First introduced in Assassin's Creed 3, a system I think many have overlooked in the last few years is the Whistle. Given that Mirage is a true stealth-focused game, it's never been a better time to hide in the shadows and whistle to your enemies, distracting them and pulling them in closer before you strike. In previous games, that just wasn't as practical, mainly because the focus was on combat. But this time around, stealth is king, and that means using everything in your bag of tricks. The range is deceptively long, so if you're trying to lure in a guard, don't feel like you always need to go to them. You can simply whistle a tune and make them come to you. Assassin's Creed Mirage reintroduces a reactive combat system that relies heavily on dodges and parries to open up an enemy for a lethal one-shot counterattack. 
Couple that with the game's focused on stealth action, and you really need to think about the game from a different perspective. Gone are the days of running headfirst into a battle. You're not a Viking warlord anymore, and your skills in combat are better suited when used from the shadows. Aside from your blades, you'll also have access to a small handful of tools unlocked by allocating points in the trickster skill tree. In my opinion, the goat tool is the smoke bomb because it directly counters the biggest threat in the game, groups of soldiers. When used, you can blanket a small area with red smoke that hides your movements and makes enemies unaware of their surroundings. This means you can easily sneak in, assassinate multiple targets, and then get out before anyone is the wiser. It's a great way to deal with enemy choke points and easily one of the best combat tools you'll have access to throughout the game. Speaking of tools, if you're looking for that extra edge in combat, I highly recommend you come back to a Hidden Ones Bureau on a semi-regular basis to check in with the Bonamusa brothers who unlock and upgrade your various tools. While unlocking a tool is tied to your skill tree progression, upgrading a tool simply requires that you have the right resources. There are two primary ways to get resources, by opening up chests found usually in heavily guarded areas and purchasing them from general goods vendors. If you heard what I said before about pickpocketing, then you'll know that favors aren't the only thing you'll walk away with when stealing from the people of Baghdad. With each stolen purse, you'll either get some coin or an item. Take these items back to a vendor, toggle to the sell tab, and use the quick command to sell all of your trinkets. This is hands down the best way to make money in the game and the fastest route to securing resources needed for upgrades. Keep in mind that tools do have a limited use, so whenever you can, try and restore your stock by interacting with smaller chests you find out in the world, and if you want the quick solution, just go to the general goods vendor and you can quickly restock your entire inventory. This does come with some coin, but as long as you're pickpocketing and selling your trinkets, you'll be fine. In my mind, tools are a priority, as they provide the most benefit when it comes to the stealth action gameplay. But if you prefer a more direct combat approach, then you'll need the resources to upgrade your weapons and armor. Just know that the tool upgrade system is actually multi-tiered. You'll need to spend resources multiple times to unlock all three tiers of benefits. Note that while you can only pick up one upgrade per tier, there is a neat skill tree option that allows you to choose two upgrades in the first tier. Fair warning before this next tip, if you don't wanna know about legendary weapons, you might wanna jump ahead because while I won't reveal everything, I will guide you on the right path towards some legendary loot. At some point in the earliest portion of the game, you'll reconnect with Nihal, and she'll tell you she's obsessed with a strange symbol. This will lead to a new investigation outside of the main story. The key to discovering this secret is by venturing to this oasis here in the northern wilderness. At first blush, it doesn't look like much, but dive into the water, and you'll soon realize there are secrets lurking just below the surface. At this point, I won't say much more because we plan on doing a full video covering this topic, but I didn't want to leave you out in the cold, in case you get stumped. Needless to say, it's not a mirage. So there you have it, everything I wish I knew sooner about Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Mirage. As always, we hope you guys enjoyed this helping of tips and tricks. Wish I Knew Sooner is a series we've been doing consistently here on the channel since 2019, so while there are many imitators, there can only be one OG. As always, thanks for stopping by Legacy Gaming. If you want to support the channel, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. We've got more Assassin's Creed Mirage content coming your way, so keep it right here and never miss a thing. Of course, you can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free giveaways going on all the time. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on. <laughs>